Let's do there. Okay. Here we go. Gent versus Melvin Fro here. Uh, okay, both players got Melvin Fro on the left. Gent on the right side of the map here. Both players starting on a high ground, kind of a valley here in between uh, both of their starting bases. It looks like both players running Badger here. Um, kind of cool. So, so Squizzard, Pigeon, Skunk, Badger, Wolf from Gent. And then we got uh, Squirrel, Pigeon, Falcon, Skunk, uh, Badger, Mine from Melbourne Fro. So, I definitely think Melbourne Fro's... Actually, the early game is quite close. Both players have really good lineups for this. Um, but yeah, and then we got two Cabots kind of in the center. Both players are able to get those um, optimally. You got some water in the middle here, so I think uh, Gent can defend really easily. So can Melvin Fro. So um, definitely a macro game. Uh, yeah, and see both players. It looks like Melvin Fro is going to go for a tier one Warren first, but Gent's just going to go for straight second base. raise the game sound a little. I think it's probably just quiet. So here we go, both players with their second expansions. It's Melvin Fro already has three warrants down, so does Gent. Um, so Gent starting off with a Squizzard, Melvin Fro going pure squirrels. So lizards aren't going to be that useful here for early game attacks. You got this cabin kind of blocking that uproot, and then you got this, you know, kind of high ground area that's going to be hard to push in with with a lizard. So I don't know if Gent will be able to get anything done here. It looks like he's wrapping around. There's some mines here. He sees he can get forty food here with this scout, Melvin Fro. Ooh, okay. Well, they're going to blow up prematurely here and take out a lizard, but. Still 40 food for 20, which is not bad at all. Ooh, these are going to run past the cabin here. It's not going to pick any off. He's going to sell them off anyway, and he's going to go put even more into eco here. Gent with 14 farms, moving through at 12. So both players going heavily into the macro here. It's like OBS isn't getting the game audio. Both players are going to fully saturate their second expansions here. Um, Melvin Fro is going to go into Badger. I'll try and fix the sound next game. Um, and uh, Gent is going to go for Wolf first. Um, Gent does have Skunks up, so potentially could attack in here, but Melvin Fro is building Skunks of his own. So, Gent floating a decent amount of food here. Let's, let's see what he does. Puts down the Badger. He's going for this Wolf-Badger play. So yeah, I definitely agree with Mocha in the chat here. If if Melvin Fro doesn't take his opportunity with timing, Gent's just going to have a stronger army because of his two tier threes. Um, he is getting up Pigeons as well, but Gent is also responding with his own Pigeons. Um... Maybe if Melvin Fro fought around a minefield, it would be uh, valuable for him. But right now, he hasn't really set anything up, and Melvin Fro is getting up two badgers. Okay, so potentially that could be um, deciding here. So I don't even two badgers is has to be more DPS than oh, oh a buffed badger. Um, 
He's also getting Falcons up. I think Falcons are going to be very strong here. Um, Gents going more into the tier ones. Um, and Melvin Farrow is getting up four skunks. So four skunks to kind of counter that mass tier one here. And now he's going to start buffing up um, his Badger Warren. So that Badger is going to come out probably before Melvin gets his second Badger out. But I don't know if Gent will be able to uh, go all the way in in this time. Looks like he's going to take this territory up here by capturing this cabin. So a little bit more on the heavy side for the tier 2 for Melvin. But Gent has far more tier 1 and he has the wolf buff. I, I don't know if Gent knows that Melvin has two badgers. But oh, he's using the pigeons for the high ground here. Skunk gas is going to come down here. The badger micro is in order. Ooh, and Melvin's first Badger almost goes down, but he's going to save them. Uh, looks like Gent lost more on that fight, even though it's still quite even. No true winner. Melvin's rebuilding faster, though, with this slight advantage. Gent also picked off a farm. It looks like he's going to try and keep the Badger in front so he can get the rev started before the fight goes down. The Wolf is tanking a little bit here. Ton of Skunk Gas goes down. Melvin's Badger is going to take a decent amount of damage, but it's going to survive. These 12 pigeons in the back are doing a lot of work. And here we go. Gent's losing his army very quickly. These Falcons are doing a lot of work on the front, tanking a little bit for the Badgers. And this double Badger strat so far has been able to take the fights convincingly both times. And I think Gent is uh, in a little bit of trouble here. His wolf went down. Did he... I think the wolf might have died there. That's okay. So now he's going to have to try and offend against this double badger here. His badger is going to go all the way in, getting destroyed by these falcons. And Melvin Fro going to take game one. Um, okay, let's see. I'm unsure why my desktop audio is not working. Hmm. Um. That's very annoying. I'm not sure why my audio isn't working. Okay. Well, I I don't I'll. I'll try and figure it out over the period of time we get this breaks, but for now, um, Gent's gonna start at the north of the map. Melvin Throw is gonna start at the south here. Gent switching his deck up a huge amount here. He's gonna bring in Squizzard with Mole and Ferret, Mine and uh, Drumfire Cannon, while Melvin Fro is gonna stick with the same deck he had last time. Um, this map looks very nice for uh, Gent, especially for defending here. Although he does have these ferrets, which mean he's probably going to want to do attack in. Um, you have your audio output capture set to the right source. Uh, it should be... I don't understand... Uh, I think if I would fix it, I have to delete the audio mixer in its entirety, and then you guys wouldn't hear me for a little bit. So I don't know if I want to do that. But um, anyway, uh, Jen's going to start building his ferrets up. So it looks like he's definitely going to want to look for... Um, 
for an early push here with these ferrets and use that advantage. Uh, Melvin Fro is getting skunks up. I think poking can still get done here. Uh, Mocha thinks the map isn't beneficial towards him. I this these are is it is a better expansion path for Melvin, but I think Gent can still have a pretty good game here. It's definitely not that big of a. Um, If he gets his... Ooh, okay, there's a mine on that high ground, actually. So, okay, he's going to do a mole ferret push. Very interesting strat here. His second ferret's going to come along here. He's unaware of that mine. He's going to tag it. It's not going to do that much damage to the lizards here. And he's going to start the poke on this first mill. Goes down like 60% of its HP. He's going to do a straight-up fight here against the skunks. I don't know if that's the move. And Melvin Fro is going to repel this attack for now. The fight actually didn't go that badly for Gent, but I don't know if he wanted to really take that with these ferrets. Just trying to land some ferret shots, but Melvin Fro definitely can push in here. He's going to lose a squirrel to those ferret shells. Now the fight's going to go down. The lizards and the moles are doing a decent amount of damage, but these skunks are just going to keep alive due to the pigeons, and this is really, really bad for... Gent, he's getting pushed back into his own base. There's just too much control here. Oh, actually, Melvin Fro attacking with a little bit of a lesser army here, and these reinforcements for Gent are going to do a good amount of damage here. But he still maintains this advantage from the previous fights. And he's a farm ahead, or two farms ahead now. So this is uh, pretty bad here. I think just pushing into skunks is just a little bit too hard at this point of the game, especially if your tier two is ferrets. He's gonna try and land some shells here. Looks like he's gonna take out one squirrel with that. He's gonna take out a couple more squirrels here and a fight's gonna come down. These 12 lizards, they do a lot of damage here and he's actually pushing Melvin Fro back a decent amount. He's trying to pick off these skunks, but ooh, there's just a little bit too much pigeons and he's trying to micro around the gas. Melvin Fro loses the fight, but he's up another, th or not another, but just now he's still up three farms. Jen's trying to get his second ferret back into the front line, but he's still only, he's on five farms, man. Eventually, Jen is going to run out of steam here. He really needs to win a fight convincingly and take out those tier twos. Skunk gas is going to come down before the fight happens, and the lizards are going to come through. But there's a lot of gas and there's a lot of healing for Melvin Fro. And the ferrets are the only thing left to survive that engagement here. Running back home. The pigeons here are doing wonders for Melvin Fro. He is supply blocked on his units, but Gent is also struggling economically. So both players very limited uh, eco here. Melvin Fro has a little bit of an advantage though, and he's going to keep saturating his second base. Jet trying to get up this third mill here. He's gonna he's gonna try and act defensively here. He's now building the drum fire can. Oh he's gonna resell it. We'll see what Melvin Throw does and respond to that. It looks like he's just gonna continue to eco up here. And now it's nine farms to three. This is a pretty convincing uh I mean, I would say a loss here for Jen, uh, but if he can pull this off, Melvin definitely has not scouted that mill yet, and he's going to go up to almost a fully saturated third expansion. It looks like he's going to go for a base race strategy here. Melvin Fro definitely sees those lizards coming across. He's going to rally his army here. Gent cannot lose this amount of lizards here. He's going to lose two there. Oh, he's going to lose three to the squirrel fire. Um, but, you know, this is a great distraction. He's now getting up his farms on his third expansion. And now it's eight farms to seven. And as long as he's able to hold a little bit longer and keep Melvin Fro playing passively, he can definitely get back into this game.
Third expansion for Melbourne. Melbourne putting down some defensive line mines against this lizard push. Jen's going to run into them here while they're building, and he's going to pick them off here. And I think he can actually get this mill. Melvin is a little bit too slow to respond, and if Gent pulls through the same uh, tree line, he's going to be able to get out with the expansion. Melvin Pro immediately builds it, though. Gent, <laughs> Gent is now winning on economy, which is amazing. Melvin Fro definitely has the army advantage. Look at that. Just such a skyrocket in army advantage. But Melvin still hasn't gone up on this high ground. And he's finally going to go up on the high ground. See what he has happened. Ooh, okay. Gent is going to lose a couple lizards uh, to those mines here. But this, just this type of like little back and forth nuisance attack that Gent is doing is really quite strong here. It's able to get him back into the game. And now Melvin Fro is on six farms. Gent is on 10. I really do think Gent should start going into more army here, but he seems to just be keep doing the same repeat attack. And Melvin is just letting him pretty much, pulling his army all the way to that front line. He's gonna lose. A cup. He's gonna lose. Uh, yep. He's gonna lose three lizards for that mill. And now Melvin Fro is also going up to those farms. He's now he, Melvin Fro is taking the advantage in farms, and Melvin Fro is gonna keep his army back at his original expansion. It looks like he's gonna decide better of that and place them up front. Both players putting down a surplus of mines here. This three mines in this uh, in front of his third expansion are definitely gonna protect him from that. Gent with another wraparound attack through this tree line, and he's going to tank those two mines. Um, and they're not really going to get much done here. Melvin Fro going another original expansion. Um, the amount of deja vu in this game is ridiculous. Ooh, these mines can take out a decent amount of squirrels here. He's going to lose a couple. These squirrels are going to get picked off as well. I don't... You can see kind of the divots. They're like not significant. Ooh. And three mines are going to take down here, but Gent's going to be able to persevere and take two farms off of that anyway. So the 24 lizards still getting some stuff done. Now Melvin Fro is going to start to advance here with this distinct army. At, ooh, his tier twos are kind of misplaced and they're going to get rolled over here. And now I think Gent's army is actually stronger here. This micro up of these tier twos to get some skunk gas down on these pigs was not the best here, but it looks like Gent's gonna tank a couple more mines to his lizard army and he's gonna come out of it still with a surplus army. But look at that graph, man. Melvin Fro really just threw his tier twos out of there, which was not really a, a, a good micro choice here. Gent taking some damage, trying to see if there's mines there. Looks like he's going to try it for another wraparound with these almost 30 lizards here. He's going to come around. He's trying to pick off these warrens here. Warrens are very valuable at this stage of the game. He looks like he's going to go on to a head-on attack here. The falcon's going to go down. The skunk's going to go down. And there's still a decent amount of squirrels here defending these warrens. But Melvin Fro is going to freaking forfeit the game before it even happens. Look how close this match was. That's ridiculous that Chet was able to pull that off. Um, and we're going to hop into game number three. Currently, oh, I haven't been updating the scoreboard. That is my bad. Um, currently, 1-1. One, one. That's actually nuts. It's just Melvin Fro play too passive here, man. He, the, the, the skunks and the falcons, you know, he has such an advantage here. He didn't scout that third expansion from Jen for so long, it really, you know, the amount of game sense you have to have to understand that the only way you can get back into the game is with that fully saturated expansion and selling down on all your units. I'm surprised that Melvin Fro did not see that as an opportunity to go in, but uh, nonetheless here, um, Melvin Fro is gonna switch up his deck, bringing owls instead of the falcons. And now Gent is going to completely change it up. No more ferrets, no more artillery cannon, no more mines. And he's going to go for uh, a very 2-2 centric deck, I would say. Um, 
definitely a mid game deck. Um, so if Melvin Farrow is probably able to survive the mid game and get a couple tier three up, he's uh, looking pretty good here. Although the tier twos that Gent is bringing to this match are quite strong against the tier threes that Melvin Farrow has. You know, with this Badger and Owl, you got Falcons, you got Skunks, which are just great. Um, so. I mean, it's definitely an interesting game here. Um, map probably favors Melvin Fro here. He has this kind of this square of mills on on this high ground here that he's able to take advantage of with his proximity with his original base. Uh, Jen's going to do his second expansion start up here. Melvin looking to scout here. He's looking to see what Jen did, and he's going to match him most likely. Um, two warns down for Gent, uh, one down for Melvin. Melvin's floating a decent amount of food here, and he's going to put down a second warn here. So, uh, Lizards to start off for Gent. Melvin Fro is going to stick with the Squirrels. You know, Gent was able to get a lot done with Lizards on that previous map. This map, um, you do have some backline routes here. You can kind of go around this little tent area. Um, and he can definitely go in through this high ground, which he's already thinking about with these two squirrels, or two lizards. Uh, but the li squirrels are there to respond here. Jen has to be careful. He could have lost the lizard there for sure. Both players sitting nicely on 11 farms, though, and 6 units. Looks like they're going to go for their third war in here. Um, actually, Jen is going to go up to 5 farms. Melvin Fro trying to get some mines down. And he is also on 12 farms. So both players definitely valuing their eco here. I could be wrong, but this cabin might shoot these pigs. If, like, the pig is on the very... Oh, okay. I think it's just out of range. That would be... Yeah, that would be funny if those those got killed by the, the cabin, but it, it's just out of range. Uh, both players fully saturating their second base here. Um, Jet's going to go heavy into the lizards. Melvin Fro building up the nine uh, squirrels. Wow, wait. This is crazy. Jet must have gotten his eco up a lot quicker because he's floating more food than Melvin, and he already has an army advantage. So... Not that that's going to be a game deciding factor, but he is getting a lot more units pumped out a lot more efficiently. And there's a decent minefield here. Oh, I know why. It's because Melvin Fro has eight mines. Um, but yeah, this, these minefields for Melvin Fro definitely can do a lot of damage. And with the mi micro from the squirrels, he can get some stuff done. I don't know if he lost any. Uh, I think he lost like one lizard there, maybe, probably not. Um, but he's going to tank two mines on this high ground. Melvin Fro instantly going to be real dumb. He's going for his third expansion already with 22 farms down. Melvin Fro hasn't even thought about that prospect. He's getting up four skunks for the fight against Jet. Four skunks definitely capable of dealing with this mass. Uh, a lizard from Jet, not to mention he has 21 squirrels on top of that. So uh, a definite army advantage here, but Gent, <laughs> Gent has so much more eco here, and it's going pretty much unpunished. He's going to go on to his fourth mill. 30 to 21, man. 30 farms. There's 51 going farms on this map. I'm, I'm fairly certain I've never seen so many farms up in a game ever. Um, and he is just sticking tried and true to the lizards here, man. 31 to 24, the eco is just so high for for Gent, and he's, as long as he trades equally here, I think um, it's going to be worth it. He does, definitely does not trade equally, though. The Skunk's doing a lot of work against these 31 Lizards, and now this expansion is going to be hard to defend here. He only has 13 Lizards right now. He's trying to build up some more. Ooh, these Squirrels are left at the front without the Skunk's. And the squirrels are going to get cleaned up by the lizards. And now the skunks are alone as well. A little bit of Miss Micro here from Melvin as well. And now he's going to come in, attack the Warrens here with his so many lizards. I think Melvin can't handle this. 
This miss micro again, we see this happen for two games in a row. Melvin leaving some of his units alone without the rest of them, and they get picked off by the Lizards. This is crazy. Skunk Gas coming down. He's, he's through the gas, through the Lizards, through the Squirrels, and through the Pigeons. He's still able to kill off the Tier 2s, and he's going to take another game off with this, this pure Lizards. So, I mean, just Loki showing off that he can just win with a single unit. Um, the, the thing is here, Melvin lacks uh, a punish. He, he's never punished. He's never punished the greed from Gent, and Gent recognizes this and just is able to build up this immense amount of eco and... And, you know, as long as he trades with the Lizards, man, it instantly replenishes with these Tier 1 reinforcements. You know, I'm thinking about Melvin Fro probably going uh, Chameleons or Toads here to counter these these Lizards because it's they've been a real problem for him. He's going to go Toads. He's going to go his own Lizards here. Pretty, pretty weak Tier 2s, I would say. Um... But, you know, once he gets enough, uh, up enough units, these, these snakes and falcons will be okay. Um, Al for Gent, or Al for both players, actually. Gent gonna go, um, skunks as well. And I think, I think Gent smart here to bring squizzards because, you know, uh, he's gonna see the toads and probably sell down on his lizards and, uh, play a more sta standard game, excuse me, um, but right now, you know, Gent has been really outplaying Melvin, um, at least uh, game sense wise, and understanding tempo and how much eco he can get up without uh, without any punishment really. Um, pretty interesting map here. A lot of water, so skunks and snakes are going to be pretty valuable here, and we can also check out. Uh, the Toads having normal speed while traveling over water this game. Um, got three expansions for Melvin Fro, pretty close to him. Gent only has two. So Gent probably going to need or be forced to take this offensive uh, point in the game, which he has been doing, but he doesn't have these um, easy expansions like he has had that previous game. Um, there's also a cabin up north. And the cabin on this uh, high ground here. Um, so no uh, second expansion early here for Gent. He's just going to go for two tier one warrens. Melvin Fro, though, used to this second expansion type deal. He's going to buy his. Um, but I don't think Gent will be able to push with the, this small advantage he has of an extra warren on him. Melvin Fro's already up to that extra warren. Gent, we'll see what Gent does here. Might expand, might put a fourth Warren down, or might save up for a tier two. Looks like he might want to go get that cabin. And yeah, he's going to go for a fourth tier one Warren. Okay. Both players, four tier one. Melvin's ahead by a mill. Um, but Jen's going to start up with these mines. Where's that mine? Right in front of the cabin. Interesting. So if Melvin uh, tries to take that high ground, um, he's going to have a little surprise for him. Gent, I'm going to take this small little eco advantage with this cabin as well as some territory um, and place down a mine up there to protect that little territorial expansion. Uh, Gent, slightly more warrens, but equal amount of army here. And it looks like he might want to fight here. Kind of posturing for a battle. Uh, Melvin Fro ahead by two farms because of this expandage. Now he's going to go up by three. A gent taking this high ground cabin. We'll see if he's going to build on it. He is behind on eco. He does need to kind of keep up in that matter. And ooh, there's going to be a fight go down. I think gent has the better army here. Melvin Fro doesn't have his toads yet. And he's going to take the fight pretty convincingly. He's going to keep five lizards alive. 
a little bit of, you know, misplay from Elvin. I don't know the urgency he needed for going in there, but see, now Gent recognizes that Melvin Fro is bringing the toads. He's going to, you know, snack into the squirrels now. And, okay, he's going to get a free warren here. He's going to lose a couple of lizards on the retreat. Actually, a, quite a bit of lizards on the retreat. And now... Ooh, Melvin's gonna take, okay, he's gonna continue to play passive. He's floating a decent amount of food with this eco advantage. And Gent is on eight farms and what is that? 27 units. So, you know, definitely a big army game here. Gent definitely might wanna look into, um, look into the economy part of the game. And that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna do an aggressive expansion here. With the Squizzard, he's going to use these Squirrels to kind of take out the Toads, but this good Micro from Melvin keeping the back for as long as he did, but he's still going to lose the fight. The DPS coming out from the Squizzards is just a little bit too much. And now they're kind of pouring through here. They're getting the volleys of the Squirrel shots are a little bit too much for Melvin throw here. And he also teched up into the Owl, and I think that's just a little bit too greedy here for Melvin throw. And this pouring of Tier 1 reinforcements... For Gent is probably going to snack him the game here. And that is going to be another game to Gent. Just pure tier one. And that is going to be 3-1. So, uh, what is that? Potentially match point here for Gent. If I'm not mistaken, it is BO7. Ooh, man. Melvin Fro gonna take out the lizards, man. Melvin Fro not confident in the lizards after that game. He's gonna switch just to Squirrel Toad. Pigeon Falcon, Badger, Barbed Wire. So bring it in the Barbed Wire, bring it in the Badger again. We saw Double Badger from Melvin Fro last time he was able to get those out. Gent. Still kind of looking with this early game kind of deck here. He played, you know, it's funny. You would look at this deck and say, okay, he's going to bring in the Falcons. He's going to bring in the Skunk. He's going to bring in the Owl. But actually, he never brings those in. Or at least he hasn't brought those in yet. So um, map-wise, both players have an expansion right next to them. Uh, and then in this valley portion, Melvin Fro definitely has an advantage with the three mills kind of more angled towards his side, while Gent only has one. But Gent does this, have this pocket base um, on his side, and so far pocket bases have worked out quite well for him. Um, so yeah, and uh, let's see. Both players uh, just fully saturating. Uh, Jet's gonna go for an expansion before his first tier one. Melvin's gonna go for tier one before his first expansion. No real advantage you can get from building that tier one warren at this point of the game. So, you know, the expansion is kind of uh, protected by that fact. I don't know if Melvin saw those mines. Yeah, he is not. Okay, so. These two mines in this valley are undetected by Melvin Fro, which could be a pretty big advantage for Gent here. He's gonna go into squirrels first, though. Recognizing that Melvin Fro brought toads last game, he's probably a little unsure of whether he wants to bring lizards back. Um, but both players gonna go up to a decent amount of farms on their second expansion. Gent going up to four. Melvin Fro also going up to four now. Um... Yeah, so both players kind of just fully saturating on their base, understanding, you know, respectfully at this point in the game, they're not going to attack, they're just going to let each other macro up. And, um, ooh! Okay, big play here from Jen. Big play. Sells off all of his uh, farms here. It goes fully into the tier one. Melvin Fro is definitely going to see this. And he's gonna try and retreat to get this done, but you know these warrens are already pushed out here from Elvin Fro or for Gent, and he's coming in. Look at the lizard count is steadily going up. Melvin Fro going pure squirrel, which is kind of smart against this. The defensive unit is gonna be quite valuable here. 
Oh, and he's trying to go up the high ground, and I think Melvin has a distinct eco advantage. So, ooh, okay, now Jen's gonna realize maybe that's not the best choice, and he's gonna fully saturate. Um, fully saturate his uh, what's it? We call it uh, his second expansion. Melvin and Fur are gonna do the same. So after that initial little aggression from Gent. He's going to recognize that he actually can't get anything done there, and he's going to go back to the same old, which is definitely going to give Melvin Furrow a little bit of an advantage here. He's going to have his farms up for a little bit longer. His eco is a little bit more booming, and you can see his army count is just a, is just actually a lot of it higher. Also putting down 11 wire here. We saw the Badger work well for Melvin Furrow last time, and now he's going to bring it back in. Gent has this third expansion. Uh, Melvin Fro is going to go for another expansion here. Um, and Gents is going to go for four farms on that third expansion. Melvin Fro yet to saturate it. It's because he has the tier, or because he has the tier three out. And uh, Gent definitely has to be careful here. The Badger can tear through these lizards, especially being aided by these squirrels and now pigeons and toads. So I think Gent definitely has to tech into. Okay, okay. So, classic kind of situation here where you can kind of counter the tier 3 out with um, with eco. And we kind of see that happening. Gent going to get out his owl and some skunks. While Melvin is, you know, his badger is already a quarter of the way completed. So, if Melvin does choose to attack here, it definitely could be uh, an advantage for him. Uh, Gent does have a decent amount of mines protecting that little high ground. Um, he has nothing protecting this third base, which I think Melvin is unaware of. So a distinct eco advantage for Gent while... Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> three three Badgers uh, <laughs> for Melvin. Um, first one is going to come out now, and if he's going to go to three Badgers, I don't think he's going to be attacking anytime soon. So Gent, Gent's eco is going to pay off uh, a huge amount here um, but I don't think he's aware of the amount of badgers that Melvin is bringing up and ooh Melvin hasn't scouted this but the game sense from him he knows that that is up and now the badger is just gonna get get this mail oh no gent looking for a counterattack here he's like hey if you're gonna take my mail I'm gonna attack in here he's gonna tank some wire Forced Melvin to retreat, but Melvin got two farms off of that. And is that both badgers? I think both. I think both of the second and third badgers are building. So tanking even more wire here um, and gonna retreat. Uh, Melvin posturing his badger forward. Uh, but okay, so Gent, eco lead. He has the Falcons, he has the Skunks. Melvin Fro building into his own Falcons, bringing out even more pigeons. But he has this tier three, man. Ooh, if he, I don't think he should take this fight here. Gent definitely has the skunks for the tier one. He has the Falcons for that first badger, but here are the other two. Uh, <laughs> triple badger here. I don't think Gent is gonna... Okay, he definitely sees it now. Oh, this one skunk is going to face the wrath of those three badgers and their weapons. And Gent is going to fight in here. Triple badger. All three are fully revved here. And these skunk, these falcons and skunks are just getting picked off, man. Gent really has... He's going to have trouble dealing with these fully revved badgers, man. They have pigeons. They have falcons to the sport. And that fourth expansion is going to go down now. And that's going to be game number five, man. Jen, uh, unable to deal with uh, these badgers. And Melvin Fro definitely showing out there and is going to get it done with those badgers. So at this point, if I'm Melvin Fro, I'm thinking I pretty much have Jen figured out, right? You got the toads for the lizards. Madger seems to be, you know, beating Jen every time. And he has the barbed wire, which was able to, you know, keep his eco and protect his badgers, which is just super beneficial. Um, 
which is crazy. Okay, and again, I think, you know, RNG is just not on the side of Gentman. If he wanted to do these lizard strats, the map is not is going to deny him that this time, even though he did not bring lizards. Um, and he's going to bring moles into the equation. What did he take out? Uh, mines. He took out mines. So, Gent not seeing the mines uh, check out so far. I think Melvin's kind of cautious of them at this point. As well as, you know, one mine hit is not going to do much. And, you know, you know, at this, you know, the game keeps going on and Jet gets more and more mines, but Melvin Fur is getting more and more pigeons, so... Um, yeah, I messed up the score, hang on. There we go. Um, so yeah, the pigeons are really nullifying the damage created by the mines. Um, so still match point for Jet. Melvin Fur hanging on last game. Played quite well with the Badger strategy. Necro, uh, it was my mistake. I was thinking that Gent was this mill, and uh, this was Melvin Fro's mill, so that uh, Gent would only have one attack path through with the lizards and couldn't get around, but uh, that is not correct. So, yeah. Anyway, he didn't even bring lizards in the first place, nor is he over there, nor is Melvin Fro over here, so uh, completely moot point. Yeah, it does make a lot more sense. Um, Anyway, both players, second expansion, both players, uh, three tier ones. Mumfro actually has four tier ones. Uh, building, Gent's gonna go up to five tier ones and he's gonna bring in some diversity with these moles. And it looks like, you know, with these moles, he's gonna wanna try an early attack here. He already has two moles up front. Melvin Fro's trying to get toads into the equation, which are actually pretty good against moles here. Um, so Gent posturing across this hill here. And it looks like they're gonna come in here. The moles are gonna do a good amount of damage. One toad hit on the front liner of the moles, but the moles are gonna get oh, almost two warrants here. I think Gent will be able to hold up oh, two more moles and that, that's a second warren. And wow, okay, so two warrens down. Easy for the Gent. And he's gonna sell off the moles, instantly tech into a tier two. And you know, while the mat, while the the army value is quite similar, Melvin Fro definitely taking some punishment there from that uh, original attack from Jet. He does have the mill advantage. He has the second expansion still up. What I would have liked to seen is probably Melvin take the fight behind his mill here, and use the mill to tank. But he kind of was postured around the left side of it. Uh, with his army exposed more. Um, but yeah, Alvin Fro bringing Falcons in. Uh, Gent's gonna sell off his second expansion. Try purely army here. He's gonna go up to 15 squirrels, starting the pigeons up. And Ma Melvin Fro bringing out the Badger Warren, man. He loves the Badger. He's been seeing it work against Gent, but you know, I think Gent's army is gonna be able to push, or he's gonna wanna push at least as soon as he gets this second skunk out. And, you know, I don't see a lot of ways that Melvin Fro can work around the second skunk, especially with the pigeons, especially with the moles as his support. So this is going to be uh, quite difficult for Melvin Fro to defend here. Yeah, and he's coming in now here with two skunks and the pigeons. Melvin Fro, he's... Ooh, this pre-gas is already down, man. He's trying to dance around this. The toads are gonna come forward, get some okay hits, but most of them are gonna get shot down before they're able to connect. And you know, he's keeping these skunks up. Actually, I think the toads killed a previous skunk. So both skunks are gonna go down here, but the squirrels are able to survive for the most part. Pigeons trying to heal their best here, but there's just a lot of DPS here for Gent and not a lot of DPS for Ooh, the toad actually is gonna make him survive a decent amount. He's just gonna lose the mill and uh, I think he lost maybe one more off that. So actually able to hold here. Surprisingly, both players are supply blocked for a uh, portion of their units. 
Melvin Fro sold off his Badger, so this reproduction is kind of back up. But Gent has this, this skunk up again, and these Toads are doing a lot of frontline damage to it. It's pretty strong. Um, toad is going to come in on... Ooh, another Toad, and it's going to come in, and Melvin Fro is going to give up. Just too much damage up front from the gentleman, and I think that is gonna be our match 4-2 for Jen. Let's throw a point on there just so we can get the final score in. And, uh, all right, let's see. I think 